take all day, Larry. Come on, you're making this easy. Larry, what's up with that? <laughs> Fish of a thousand casts, that was five. <laughs> oh man. The Enrico fly. How about that, huh? <laughs> Yeah, okay. Kelly, there's a log down underneath the water. Oh, yeah, I do like that small. What's that? A little musky. He's got teeth. He's got teeth, Blair. He likes swimming. Isn't he a beauty? Bank robbers, first fish. about the entitlement. Hmm? You need a bobber for any reason? Uh, oh, no, I need this fish. Uh, eat it. Come here. Mo better. Mo better. At the launch. that we like a lot. Mm -hmm. On this edition of Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup, we join Larry Mann of the Hayward Fly Fishing Company to fish muskie on two of northern Wisconsin's most famous rivers. We hit both the Chippewa and the Flambeau in our efforts to boat a respectable fish. It wouldn't be easy or quick, but Kelly and Larry would get the job done. He's in. You good? Yes. Nice job. In our fly tying segment, Kelly heads to the fly shop to learn about Larry's knot for putting together a leader. As you'll discover, it's a beauty. A slim beauty. If you go to Hayward, Wisconsin and don't go to the National Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame, you've missed a big one. That is obvious as soon as you step onto the grounds. Big fish are everywhere really big fish, and inside the world's largest muskie and the exhibit halls are displays equally as impressive. I catch fish like this all the time. If you are intrigued with the tackle, flies, rods, reels, motors, and anglers that are the foundation of freshwater fishing in this country, you can easily spend a day here. Kelly's northwestern Wisconsin angling adventure begins here on the Chippewa, a shallow tannic river of legend to musky aficionados. What do you got for me, Larry? Got a perch pattern here from Enrico Puglisi. Yeah. Light, <laughs> easy to cast, looks good in the water. These things jettison their water. When you back cast, the water just flies off of this. They're super light. They're really not as heavy as a lot of the flies I fish for trout. So it swims and undulates in the water. This thing's going to just wiggle all over the place. And I'm sure we'll see that it, it has a positive effect on the fish. If we're using great big flies that are wind resistant and uh, hard to cast, hard to retrieve, you're going to hit the wall at some mm -hmm. point. And it may be that cast that you hit the wall on that is the fish. And so more good casts all day long. A pretty moderate retrieve on that, Kelly. Okay. You want it to, like that? Mm-hmm. Perfect. There's the Enrico Splash, my first shower of the day. <laughs> I can't wait. Kelly was giddy over the prospect of fishing such a famed piece of water and had Larry yeah, shove off before all hands were on deck and ready to serve. That didn't take all day, Larry. Come on, you're making this easy. Go. 
Larry, what's up with that? <laughs> Fished him a thousand casts, that was five. <laughs> oh man. I got your net. Nice. Good start. The Enrico fly. How about that? Huh? <laughs> if you look, you can see where that's shallow at the bank. Yep. And it drops in right there. Yep. And kind of eddies up in here. Not terribly deep, but it's the right water type. It's, you know, it's exactly the same stuff we do for big trout. Yep. It's exactly where they are, which should be easy for me, but I'm still going to ask you on every single spot. I like how that worked. <laughs> where do I throw, Larry? Right there. Oh, there's one. Oh, Ralph, it's a bite. Historically, you'd hear this stuff that the big fish were in the lakes, not in the rivers. And you told me that the world record came out of the river, right? Well, it's the, it came out of the Chippewa flowage, which is the result of damming up the East Fork and the West Fork. So okay. that fish undoubtedly grew up in a riverine environment. So it was technically a lake, but it's was a still river. Still river. Out of that wood pile. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's a tugger. I think it's a smallie. It's a big one if it is. Bank robbers, first fish. Something just rolled out down below there that was pretty substantial. That smallie was right where I thought a muskie was going to be. They're pretty much holding the same water. They hold an identical water. That's uh, they any cast you have to be prepared for either fish. What's your seasons here for fishing? Uh, the musky season opens the last Saturday in May and runs through November 30th. And we'll fish sad. it from start to finish. Is there a peak? Uh, Typically, right after they spawn, right after the season opens, mm -hmm. it's a better numbers time. You'll catch more of them. And in the fall, late fall, they put on the feed bag because they need to create eggs over the winter. Oh, little guy, did you see him? Yep, I did. <laughs> there he is. Down there in the shadows. That was a smaller one, yeah, that's two different fish. You see that one? I did. First one was about 20 inches, maybe. Yep. 22, the other one wasn't quite that big. Every float trip has its omens, and this would be no exception. The oddest looking eagle eyed our intrepid anglers as they fished on by. Hear that bridge coming up there, Larry? I'd say that I got too lucky too early. Uh, I'd have to agree. <laughs> I mean, you know, ratio -wise. Going out and seeing a muskie, you know, having it eat your fly, catching one is always a good day. Oh, you got a I was picking up his throat. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> gotta be kidding me. Oh, he's gonna just reel up. There he was. <laughs> That's not really that funny. After much crying in his beer about the big one that oh. should have been, Kelly joined Larry for a second day of muskie hunting, this time on the equally famous trophy river, the Flambeau. Okay. Kelly, there's a log down underneath the water. Oh, yeah, I do like that small one. What's that? Little muskie. He's got teeth. He's got teeth, Blair. Like swimming. Isn't he a beauty? <laughs> Come here. Hey, 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 hey. Look how beautiful that color is, though. Yeah. He's shiny. Put that green in that thing. You gotta take a ride. On this trip, it couldn't intense. last forever. The sunny skies, that is. You need a bobber for any reason? Hmm? Do you need a bobber for any reason? Uh, 
Oh, no, I need this fish. Oh, eat it, buddy. How do you like that? How about that right at the landing? Oh. How about that, Larry? You gotta like 100 that. 100 yards. Come here. Mo better. Mo better. At the launch. Uh oh. Oh, his head's out of the net. Yeah, cut that. Hold on. There we go. He's out. Look at that, Larry. 100 yards. What was that bobber for? Nice. All day. Hey, cutie. He's in. You good? Yes. Nice job. He's just been hitting all the good spots, and that's where he ate it. Yeah, right out in the middle. Wouldn't you know it? Fish long enough, and the worm will turn. No comprende, Lair. Keep casting. There must be, right? They make their own rules, all that stuff. Just ahead on Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup, we head back to Larry's shop to see how to tie up the knot. That is the Slim Beauty and pull on the two standing ends, not on the doubled end. All right. Pull it down tight, yep. and there you have a slim beauty. Nice.